Hello and welcome everyone to Stacks Ventures Demo Days. My name is Trevor Owens, the managing partner. Today is day one of two, featuring companies in alphabetical order from A to G. We're going to start today with an introduction to Stacks and Stacks Ventures, followed by an ecosystem update from the Stacks Foundation and Hero. Then we'll get into pitches from 12 startups, the first half of our cohort. Each pitch will be five minutes and they will go by fast. So make sure you're in your seat and don't miss any. Following the pitches, we will open up the breakout rooms for you to meet our founders directly until 1 p.m. We'll be back tomorrow at the same time to present the second half of our cohort. Write down this link or scan this QR code. This link will allow you to schedule one-on-ones directly with our teams. I recommend getting ahead of the pack as these will fill up. We also appreciate you tweeting using the hashtag Stacks Demo Day and follow us on our handle uh, at Stacks Startups and my handle is at TO. The purpose of Stacks Ventures is to build the best community for founders, mentors, and investors in Web3. We do this by bringing together great people, solving real problems for end users, and building great technology. Stacks Ventures has three offerings. The first is our newly launched pre-accelerator where we help founders with idea validation and go to market. And the second is our growth offering, the Growth Accelerator, which you are here today to see present. This program is highly selective, accepting less than 5% of the teams that apply, teams with traction and product market fit who are ready to grow and fundraise. Finally, we have the Bitcoin Odyssey in partnership with OKCoin where we provide 165 million in capital for our startups to scale and list their tokens. If you'd like to get involved with Bitcoin Odyssey, please contact me or my partner, Kyle Ellicott. We invest in startups building on Stacks, and Stacks is the only blockchain to offer smart contracts for mainnet Bitcoin. To understand what I mean, here is a Venn diagram. On the left, we have fully expressive smart contracts, meaning Bitcoin sidechains like RSK and Liquid, as well as Ethereum through wrapped Bitcoin. These blockchains offer far more than you can do with Bitcoin's limited script or taproot. And on the right side, we have uses Bitcoin on Bitcoin's blockchain. This refers to layer two, such as Lightning, which is not a blockchain, but a peer-to-peer network for payments. Lightning does not have global state. All the data is stored on the client. You cannot have smart contracts interacting with each other, which is by design and why Lightning is so scalable in order of magnitude more than any other blockchain, even Solana. And here in the middle, the overlap of the two, we have Stacks, the only blockchain to offer fully expressive smart contracts that can use BTC on Bitcoin's blockchain. Stacks uses Bitcoin as a settlement layer. It leverages it for security and as the ultimate store of value. And on top of Bitcoin, it offers a new highly scalable and secure layer, providing fully expressive smart contracts, decentralized storage and identity, allowing anything you can build on Ethereum to be built on Bitcoin and much more. The core developer team behind Stacks is incredible, including six distributed systems PhDs from Princeton, MIT, Harvard, and Stanford, two scientists with presidential career awards and 15,000 research citations among white paper authors. So through Stacks' consensus mechanism called proof of transfer, Bitcoin is mined in proof of work and reused to mine new blocks of stacks. Every block on stacks is recorded in a Bitcoin block, making it impossible to reorganize stacks and get away with it unless you also reorganize Bitcoin. This solves the bootstrapping problem. It gives stacks a much higher security budget out of the box. In addition, stacks reads the state of Bitcoin and Bitcoin wallets, Bitcoin transactions can trigger smart contracts on stacks. As you'll see today, Stacks can also trigger transactions on the Bitcoin side. It is the only blockchain that can do this in a trustless way. Well, isn't it expensive to build on Bitcoin? Isn't it slow? This is the exact problem that Stacks solves. Because the cost of using Bitcoin is based on a fixed cost per byte, and Stacks scalability solutions can settle millions of smart contracts in a single hash, the cost of using Stacks is extremely low. Right now, it's less than a penny to use a transaction. And as someone who has spent tens of thousands of dollars on Ethereum gas, I definitely appreciate this. So Stacks scalability solutions are already live on testnet. And as you will hear today from Hero CEO, Alex Miller, hyperchains are a new scalability solution that allow providers to to set the constraints they want. 
meaning that Solana-like speeds are possible on Stacks and will be available soon. This is Stacks' value proposition in a single picture. It provides the expressiveness of Ethereum with the durability of Bitcoin. And Stacks is not proof of stake. Its consensus mechanism is called proof of transfer. Unlike proof of stake, which uses staking its own token to validate transactions, Stacks relies on spending Bitcoin to validate transactions, an external resource, meaning holding the native token does not give you direct control over consensus. This is like having two separate branches of government to check each other. And since Stacks does not use puzzle solving like proof of work, but simply recycles Bitcoin already mined, it does not have a high energy expenditure and is highly scalable. To me, this is quite amazing. And as a nerd, I love geeking out on Stacks' brilliant consensus design. So in Ethereum, you can stake Ethereum and earn Ethereum, but in Stacks proof of transfer, you stack Stacks and you earn Bitcoin, the only trustless Bitcoin yield. Just earn a native Bitcoin drip while you sleep. The dream come true. Another innovation from Stacks is the Clarity smart contract language. So let me ask you a question. Would you sign a contract or a term sheet that you couldn't read? Of course not. So why are we signing transactions every day on Ethereum that we can't read? A few years ago, a study was done that showed only 1% of Ethereum smart contracts have source code on Etherscan. Decompiling unverified contracts requires you to trust a centralized authority. On the Clarity side, all smart contracts are interpreted, meaning the source code is visible. And in addition, it's Turing incomplete, which means the output is deterministic. This limits the attack surface by an order of magnitude on stacks. It means connecting your wallet to a random website allows us to notify you if someone's gonna drain your wallet. It allows us to alert you because we know exactly what every smart contract is going to do, which is impossible on Ethereum because it's Turing complete. So this is not something that you can do with Ethereum or any um, EVM based chain. Now, while the market is in turmoil, I know there's a lot of stress um, in the markets, Stacks is actually in a great position. With Stacks co-founder Manib Ali raising more than 150 million in dry powder just a few months ago, the Bitcoin Odyssey bringing in over 165 million in venture to fund our startups, and Stacks becoming the number one project in terms of active developers on Bitcoin, we are going to capitalize on this market downturn and come out of this bear market on top. So we already have a thriving ecosystem that is growing rapidly. In fact, we need to update this slide because in the past six months, there's already three times the number of apps uh, building on Stacks than what you see here. And so if you want to get started with Stacks, you can download um, the Stacks wallets, xverse.app, which we'll be presenting tomorrow for mobile, hero.so for web. You can buy Stacks on okcoin.com, Coinbase, or Binance. You can buy an NFT on Gamma.io, which we'll be presenting today. I recommend getting a CrashPunk PFP. You can buy a Bitcoin do domain name at btc.us. Get your name before someone else. And you can try out um, DeFi on alexgo.io or arcadigo.finance, two of our portfolio companies from last cohort. And of course, stack some stacks and earn real BTC. So when it comes to Stacks Ventures, we invest 50K on an unkept note in all of our companies, the best terms anyone can get. And this is how we attract the best founders. We also offer grants now of up to 250K, the highest grant received in this current cohort, equity free from our foundation, which Brittany Laughlin, the executive director, will talk more about in the ecosystem update here in a second. And we work hands-on with our companies for three months, meeting them every single day, helping them de-risk their business tech support and code auditing, recruiting talent, attracting customers, identifying use cases, and introducing them to smart investors like yourselves. Our investment thesis is simple. We invest in outstanding teams who can find an easy way to do something difficult, not a difficult way to do something difficult. We look for skilled technical teams with a proven track record who are committed full-time, with thoughtful and balanced cap tables, practical plans, strategic and intellectual flexibility, moving fast and hitting milestones. And we take a special interest in, in underrepresented founders 
and teams already building in the Stacks ecosystem. Teams who are focused on big problems and pains with founder market fit, building a differentiated solution, leveraging the unique features of Stacks, and building for high stakes use, high stakes use cases. You can read more about our thesis here, bit.ly slash stacks AC thesis. And so I'm proud to be surrounded by a fantastic team. Andrea Zaragoza Ballesteros, our program director, Kyle Ellicott, and our analyst team, Pooji, Jake, and Kevin. And so I hope you guys enjoy the show. Um, without further ado, we're gonna move on to the next portion, our ecosystem update. I'd like to bring up Brittany Laughlin, the executive director of the Stacks Foundation, and Alex Miller, CEO of Hero Systems. Great, Trevor, thanks for having us. Good morning, everyone. Cool, I'm gonna share my screen real quick, so just give me one second. Um, so I just wanna kick off a little bit more about the Stacks ecosystem, because going through this accelerator welcomes you not only to your peers and the companies that you're working with, but to an entire ecosystem of builders and people working to make this a success. So I just want to give you guys a quick overview of some of the growth that's been happening at Stax. Um, I'm Brittany Lachlan. I'm the executive director at Stax Foundation. Um, we provide support to builders in the ecosystem to help them uh, further our mission of a user on internet built on Bitcoin. So just like a quick look back at since mainnet launch about 18 months ago, these are some of the stats that we have in our ecosystem. You know, we have over 400,000 Stacks addresses, um, over 3,800 Clarity Smart contracts have been built in that time. We have close to 500 million Stacks participating in stacking. Um, there's over 75 companies that are up running, delivering services to the ecosystem built on Stacks. And there's many others that are just at the startup phase or just emerging out of this group. So that's like a lot of people whose whole job is devoted to things building on stacks. So we count kind of roughly about 250 full-time people um, working on building these companies. And that doesn't include all the people that are doing it part-time, nights and weekends, or just figuring out how they can contribute and aren't yet contributing. On the transaction side, there's about one and a half million transactions that have already gone through the stacks blockchain in the last 18 months. Um, we've seen over 1,500 BTC paid out in rewards to stackers, and we've awarded from the Stacks Foundation 1.5 million grants. Um, so there's a lot of money that's going into the ecosystem that we're using to support builders and things that contribute to a greater ecosystem. We also have 48 trading pairs uh, for the token so that the token is available worldwide which is very important for people who are building for diverse audiences, global audiences. They are able to access Stacks and they're able to build with Stacks. Now, how does the Stacks Foundation support builders? Well, right now our goal is to be able to support the next 10,000 Clarity developers through education. Um, you know, you'll hear more from Alex. Uh, Hero has some of the most advanced tools. So we're really helping welcome people into Clarity so that they will be set up for success to use things that Hero is building. We're also delivering Bitcoin value to other ecosystems through network bridges. So we know a number of folks here are really looking forward to some of the bridges that have been built or are coming um, as ways to bridge into other ecosystems. Uh, we have a hundred million stocks treasury that we've dedicated to supporting the growth of stocks. Um, some of those investments include investing in the accelerator and helping this get off the ground, which is an incredible program. I'm so excited you guys are part of it, and we're so excited to be early supporters of it. We've also launched um, other programs like the Mintry and Unmutable, which are very specific to creatives who are building things in NFTs in um, different verticals like music. So really trying to expand the reach of Stacks beyond just technical, but also to some of these other industries that maybe aren't as uh, familiar with uh, blockchain yet. And then lastly, we do have something called residents through the Stacks Foundation. And these are individuals who are working on behalf of the ecosystem, supporting different initiatives, things like governance, UX, clarity, and others. So if you're a builder and you're looking for support on your Clarity contracts, you can contact the Clarity Labs residents and they can help you do work on that. Um, so this is a way to really expand the reach of our team and be able to support whatever needs exist in the ecosystem. These residents um, have very specific 
uh, skills that they can bring to the ecosystem and support builders here. So I'm really excited for the existing teams that we'll hear from today who can kind of uh, tap into these resources. And for anyone new that's listening and thinking about, you know, how are these companies going to be supported once they launch? There's a number of really great initiatives and a lot of capital behind them to support their growth over time. Um, just a few more things about where the Stacks Foundation can plug in. It's a great way to apply for grants. So if you're building something that's open source and benefiting the whole ecosystem, you can apply for a grant, which is equity free dollars that you can invest in your project. We offer free Clarity education through Clarity Camp and a number of other initiatives. So if you're looking to learn Clarity or just improve your skills, you can do that for free. You can participate in Stacks Governance, which rules how the blockchain is set up. We have a big upgrade coming up uh, that Alex will probably mention. Um, so you can get involved in that, including voting, reading what's coming and staying up to date on the different changes. We also can help you get connected into the $300 million in capital, which has been set up through Bitcoin Odyssey and a number of other partners at the foundation that we're working with to ensure that there's capital for the long run for your business. And then you can also attend and speak at Global Stacks events that we're hosting through the foundation. Um, we had a great event in Miami. Um, we have a number of great events on the calendar coming up. So whether it's digital or it's in person, we'd love to showcase your business and introduce more people to Stacks. So these are just some of the ways that the foundation can support your journey and really welcome in anyone who's listening that's maybe new to the Stacks ecosystem and wants to know how it's growing, how it's doing and how they can get more involved. So that's a little bit about the Stacks ecosystem to date, but I'd love to hand it over to Alex, uh, the CEO at Hero, because he has a number of really exciting updates coming around the technical side that I think people will be excited to hear about. Absolutely. Thank you, Brittany. Um, <clears throat> I don't have slides. I'm not as well prepared as Brittany, but I do have cool things to talk about. So hopefully that makes up for it. Um, Brittany mentioned, I'm Alex Miller. I'm the CEO of Hero Systems. You probably know by now that I am, that Hero is the dev tools company in the Stacks ecosystem. So kind of everything that you might be using to build on, on top of Stacks, whether that's Clarinet for writing your Clarity smart contracts, the Stacks API, Stacks.js, uh, we make all of that cool stuff. Um, I'm also curious who here uses the VS Code extension. Show of hands. Um, so, our entire team has been focused on, you know, the last year has been really interesting for us because obviously there's a lot of you guys have been moving into the ecosystem doing it. We've been kind of finalizing our transition from being kind of like the old block stack into Hero entirely, the dev tools company, right? We've been scaling up our team. Uh, we're now up at about 45 people who are working on everything Hero. And just since, you know, they, they're all focused on just like, how do we make developers' lives easier every day, right? How do we, how do we give Stacks the best developer experience? And so since you all started this court, um, we've reduced our API's average uh, event import time by like 40%. Um, we've extended support in Clarinet's debugger in the VS Code extension and reduced the size of Stacks.js packages by like 80%. Uh, but even I think the most exciting, obviously, is we launched hyperchains onto the Stacks testnet for folks to try out. And so, for those of you not familiar, hyperchains is an L2 scaling solution for Stacks, uh, basically allowing dedicated chains, whether it's for an app or a community of apps or whatever, um, to get very you know much quicker execution, much greater uh, capacity. Um, in order, and of course, it all still just settles right back down on the stacks, which settles right back down onto Bitcoin. So you're getting ultimately that same really strong security, obviously trading off a little bit of the decentralization at, at the top, though, to get a lot more speed than what you could ever achieve kind of on, on an L1. So that's really exciting. Um, if you want more updates on that as it comes, uh, you can obviously read our blog every single day. If you don't want to have to read the blog every single day, you can just uh, head to hero.so slash updates. And we will, you know, you'll get our, our regular newsletter that will put all of those out. Um, you know, come play with us on Twitter. That's great too. You know, the other thing that's really great is share your skills, right? I spent eight and a half years at, at a very small computer website called Stack Overflow that some of you may have used before. And one of the most important things I learned there, obviously, is like developers like B 
being able to build with other developers and get help from them. And I think the, the friendliness, the openness of the Stacks community is really one of the huge benefits and, and huge differentiators for it. And so we love for all of you guys to be a part of that. We are an open source decentralized com community. That's an advantage for us. And we want to help other devs break into stacks. So if you've got friends who are looking at it, you know, point them at the resources, ping me. If you have someone who's trying to get in the ecosystem and is having problems, email me, alex at hero.so, and like I will make sure it happens. Um, put it on social, be part of the Discord community. It's it's a really big deal for helping us drive the whole ecosystem forward on it. Um, <clears throat> and then of course, any other ways that you want us to improve or things you need from us at Hero, um, we're here, we're here to talk to you again. Obviously we're always, we've got multiple channels in the Discord. You can ping me on Twitter or wherever. Um, and yeah, thanks for being here as part of it. Uh, I know, I know yeah. Brittany and I just give a lot of updates, but I think Brittany, I'm curious, is there anything, you know, you've seen some of these startups before. Is there anything you're particularly excited about seeing today? Ooh, yeah. So I did get a little preview and um, I, I got a little preview, but um, I was really surprised by how many of these companies uh, don't talk about blockchain first. Like to me, that is a win. Like we're talking about problems, um, you know, solving connectivity issues. Um, we're talking about uh, companies that think about entertainment and like gaming. And it doesn't have to be about blockchain first. I think actually most of the end users who use these products won't even know it's built on stacks, which to me is a win because, you know, it's so seamless. It's so easy. People don't need to get caught up in all the technical stuff to enjoy the products and really find the opportunities for them. So as much as I love stacks, I love that um, a lot of these tools aren't just about that. So that's what I'm looking forward to and um, really excited to like have other people here kind of see them and be able to use them. And hey, maybe they won't even know that they're built on stacks. Uh, yeah. But how about you, Alex? Did you get sort of a I think preview? I think <laughs> very similarly to you, I was really excited about like the lack of focus on the technology itself, and especially the lack of focus on like financialization play, you know, like just direct financialization attempts, what is really interesting to me. Um, like there's a couple things that are cross-generational approaches, right? Not just targeting like the core crypto demo, but how do they reach out and go to like their kids and their, you know, their parents and pull them in. Um, a lot of cool things around like native use of Bitcoin, which again, a really big differentiator for the Stacks ecosystem is our relationship to Bitcoin on it. And so I think just much more of a of a end user centric focus than I think you see from a lot of projects that are more about like, hey, here's a cool tech, let's just do something and see. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I do not want to delay any further. I want these companies yes. to be able to present. So thank you, Alex. Thanks, Trevor, for having us into the team. So we'll hand it back over so you can kick things off. Absolutely. Thanks, everyone. Great. Well, thank you so much, Brittany and Alex. Again, you can check out stacks.org, the Stacks Foundation, and you can also check out hero.so for Hero Systems. And so um, before we move on, we have a brief uh, legal disclaimer. And moving on, we're going to start off with the pitches. So I'd like to welcome up one huddle to the stage. We're going to be going alphabetical order, five minutes each. It's going to go fast. Make sure you're in your seats. Take it away, Sam. Hello, I'm Sam with One Huddle. One Huddle is anything you want to learn in a game on your phone. We're a successful business today. Hub over 100 enterprises across dozens of verticals. have raised over $10 million to date from some great investors. Today, I'm going to show you how we're going from a Web 2 company into Web 3 and revolutionizing education as we know it. So before we get into the problem we're solving in Web3, let's fill you in on the success we've had over the past six years in Web2. We're already the market leader. The clients love us. Over 100 brands globally across 29 verticals, 400,000 users globally play games every day to skill up for work, from games on hard skills to soft skills to financial literacy. Millions of games played in 25 different languages. Here's how one huddle works. Companies can turn any boring training module or video or learning 
into a quick burst mobile game experience in minutes. Games are fast. Employees learn anything in these two to three minute games. And it sticks. A recent study proved you retain 250% more on one huddle over a traditional watch the module, take the quiz thing. Let's face it, crypto's confusing. Well, this is what the average person looks like when you bring up a convo on Web3, lost, overwhelmed. I mean, where do you even start? In this moment, we know the world is extremely early in Web3. The everyday person isn't convinced yet. Less than 5% of the world holds crypto. And even if they were convinced, it's a complicated uh, space to understand. There's over 10,000 coins today with that number expected to grow by 5,000% over the next three years. It's a massive opportunity at the same time to educate and on-ramp the mass market to crypto. By the end of this year, there'll be nearly a billion crypto holders. And over the next five to 10, we're talking about nearly 60 trillion in wealth that's going to be following in the crypto markets. Thanks, boomers. So stick with me a second. I got an idea. Imagine all this stuff you see. You got it? In this, a game, something the majority of people already understand and know, to earn this. We see a major opportunity today in Web3. So here's what we're doing. We have three phases. Our first product we're already out in market with, being the first to market uh, in leading learn to earn platform for all of Web3, imagine learning and earning anything through games. We're already signing up exchanges and tokens to white label our service. Then we're going to extend to our customer base because all our Fortune 500 companies we're already working with, they want to understand Web3 and want their people to be on the leading edge. Imagine us becoming the first workforce platform using crypto as a reward. This is going to be our core for the next six to nine months. Then we're going to look at how we integrate NFTs and certificates to extend our lead in the space on top of the existing revenue generating businesses we're working with. Imagine the worker having the ability to show the world what they know and own what they know through a long work life. Now that's the future of work. We have the right team doing it. Decades of experience across consumer games, B2C, enterprise, SaaS, our team is ready. And we're not just living at the center of this discussion on the future of work, One Huddle is leading it. We've already been approved for a $115,000 grant from the Stacks Foundation to begin that track one. We're fundraising and looking for people who want to change the game with us. Let's change the future of Web3 together. Game on. Thank you so much, Sam from One Huddle. Next up, we have Bazooka Tango. Take it away, Bo. Hi, I'm Bo Daly, founder and chief exec at Bazooka Tango. I spent over 20 years in the gaming industry and in the last 10 building disruptive companies, bringing core games, so gamers games, to frontier technologies. These gamers are going to be the next 100 million wallets into the Web3 ecosystem. So who's going to build the Riot games, the blizzard of Web3? And this is a gamer's brand building deep games that they want to spend a thousand hours playing and then another thousand hours reading about, watching video content online, creating that video content, building online communities and competing with other players all over the world. Right? These are the things that core gamers do already, and they're turbocharged by Web3 tech. And what's more, these are basic human drives, right? So tribe, status, competition, the kind of companies that can serve those needs are the ones that go on to build hundred billion dollar businesses. So Who's going to inspire players to come to Web3 with a dream of standing on a stage, holding a trophy over their head, and a giant cardboard check behind them? Who's going to bring the next 100 million wallets into Web3? We will. And I can say that confidently because, well, I've done this before. My last company built the world's first core game on mobile. We launched that game off the Apple WWDC stage right alongside Tim Cook and Bono. Uh, we built a legion of fans playing the game for, on average, 90 minutes a day and competing in televised tournaments all over the world. And we did this at a time when Candy Crush was still new and everyone thought that mobile was good for cartoony casual games with three minute long sessions. You fast forward to today and mobile is absolutely dominated by these like hardcore esport ready games. So when I look out and I see the current landscape of play to earn games, I just see this huge opportunity to transform the industry in the same way over the coming year. 
games like Axie Infinity have really proven out some new business models over the last year or so and built massive businesses off the back of what's ultimately a really tiny number of wallets. Um, but the execution of these games does not meet the exacting standards of core gamers that are going to be needed to really scale out this opportunity. And by taking these new models, integrating them into world class titles that have deep strategy, killer visuals, you're going to give players something really, truly amazing to talk about online. That's going to amplify every marketing dollar and build juggernaut momentum. Web2 gaming is a $200 billion market. So the possibilities in Web3 have to be north of a trillion, right? This is an unreal opportunity. And when you can field a great looking trailer, and tell players that this isn't some kind of NFT roadmap thing that may or may not come out, but is an awesome game launching this year and already playable today, you're going to get some retweets. Now, this is our first title. It's a beautiful game with collectible units that players collect and assemble into a custom deck of cards. It's not played onto some flat arena, but onto a ever-changing hex grid with line of sight, chess-like complexity, uh, every unit with unique gameplay. This is a strategically rich game that's easy to pick up, hard to put down. It's built for competition, live streaming, and spectation. And again, it's downloadable today. But we're not stopping there. The promise of Web3 is a metaverse, right? The really big opportunity here is to give players an interconnected system of experiences where they can explore and bring value with them from game to game to game over years and years and years of play. Now, the only way to really deliver that promise today is to build it. And we're really uniquely positioned to do that. We're building out a portfolio of games across major core gaming genres. So CCG tactics, battle Royale, MOBA, brawler shooter. We're connecting three AAA quality titles to seed this metaverse within the next 12 months and have a pipeline to build out beyond that. And by doing that, we're going to build the destination network for core gamers in Web3 and really begin to take advantage of the strong network effects of multiplayer communities. So shared Marcoms, owned media and social surfaces, these help build strong and loyal communities where players can be famous for their skill and rewarded for their contributions. And with our, our unified network token is going to provide stable and ever increasing utility for players and our own uh, Web3 layer is going to make it super easy for players to join guilds, for esports organizations to come and register for onstage tournaments with big prize pools, really making players' dreams come true. And then once we've established ourselves as best in class, world changing gaming brand for Web3 games, we'll be in a position to open up our platform as the premier publisher, helping other AAA devs connect with this hugely valuable audience. In short, we're building the Activision Blizzard of Web3. The ask to get our first three titles launched over the next year and to start to build out the platform and scale beyond that. This is about building a durable brand, getting the chess pieces out on the table to anticipate what's gonna be a gigantic market shift. And we're looking for investors that are thinking 10 years down the road, not on financialization, but on mainstream blockchain adoption and that are aligned to creating long-term stores of value for hundreds of millions of gamers. If that's you, I hope to see you in a breakout room later today. Thank you. Thank you, Bo from Bazooka Tango. Next up, we have Walio. Take it away, Kelly. Hi, I'm Kelly and we're building Walio. Millennials are all grown up. They're not just living their best lives and eating avocado toast. They're actually in the driver's seat as the largest group of crypto holders. Over 45% of millennials own crypto. And if you count Xennials, that number goes well north of 60%. And they're stuck right in the middle of their baby boomer parents and Gen Alpha kids. And they're becoming increasingly financially responsible for their parents. Most of their parents are pretty clueless about crypto. And there are some wealth transfer implications taking place. In fact, over 55% of baby boomer parents expect some type of financial assistance from their kids during retirement years. I'm going through this headache right now. And in a post-pandemic world, we live in a time of uncertainty with inflation and turbulent geopolitics. This is a time where families are looking to come together the most. Millennials have a majority of the crypto, but a majority of the wealth is concentrated amongst baby boomers. And there is a massive need in the market for a multi-generational wealth management solution. 
just like we have a shared bank account in the real world, why don't we have easy to use shared crypto accounts? We don't just need wallets to store crypto, we need wallets that actually manage multi-generational wealth. And that's exactly why we're building Walio, the world's first supercharged family shared crypto wallet built on Bitcoin using Stacks. Walio has a friendly, approachable user interface with a main account with up to six sub-accounts. The main account holder has complete control and oversight of coins, collectibles, and assets purchased and sold on our exchange. We also offer stacking, which is a unique feature that allows users to earn yield and receive Bitcoin rewards, as well as settings at the sub-account level. So whether it's your parents or your kids, you can safely onboard them and have complete oversight. Walio is a new way to manage your family's digital assets. It's a shared bank account for the Web3 world. Walio also sets the stage for decentralized autonomous estates. We call them days. Days are unique to families. Think of it as a mini DAO just for the family. It will auto-generate a smart contract that will be legally standing for that family in just a few clicks to make sure that families can plan ahead, save, and work together. We fundamentally believe that every contract today will be governed by a smart contract tomorrow. You can collaborate with your extended family to plan and save for IVF treatments. Create a Bitcoin savings account or a college savings plan for your favorite nephew. Work together with your family to save and plan for that family vacation or family reunion. Buy grandma's house to keep it in the family or get all the cousins together to buy their favorite blue chip token and decide as a group when or if you sell. And lastly, and most important, inheritance planning. God forbid if anything were to happen in your family, we wanna make sure you're covered and that the assets they've been saving for you are there for you. And all that hard work is not gonna to go to waste. For example, there's over $140 billion of lost Bitcoin stranded in wallets today. Crypto inheritance is non-existent and we're gonna be the ones to change that. Most take a build it and they will come approach to product. That's a web two mindset. Web three is all about building community first. And that's exactly what we did with our audience first strategy. We made over $2 million building a brand for families. And we have over 2 million in pipeline revenue opportunities from partnerships that add value to our brand and our community. And now we're laser focused on the core product. My background is in FinTech and computer science. I'm a technical founder. I spend time at Discover Card and American Express and JP Morgan. And fun fact, I'm actually a third generation entrepreneur on both sides of my family. My co-founder Emil worked at Disney, JP Morgan, and was a full-time professor of economics. And fun fact, he also owned some Bitcoin ATMs as early as 2014. So we intimately know how fast those transactions can add up. And the rest of our team is awesome. We have folks who've had engineering roles at financial powerhouses such as Goldman Sachs and Bloomberg. We're raising and we'd love for you to join our movement. We're looking to expand the team to get this product launched, deployed, and stress tested by the end of the year. We are pioneering how ordinary families invest, plan, and earn together with extraordinary tools. Thank you. Thank you, Kelly from Walio. Next up, we have My DLC Link. Take it away, Thank Aki. Thank you, Trevor. My name is Aki and I founded DLC Link. The biggest market in crypto, even today, is still Bitcoin. Bitcoin is the only truly decentralized digital asset. But Bitcoin by itself isn't enough. It needs to have smart contracts for uses like lending and currency hedging. A trillion dollars of cap Bitcoin capital is waiting to use native Bitcoin in smart contracts. Why is Bitcoin so important? It's the only truly safe decentralized digital asset. Bitcoin builds on decades of cryptographic research, so it's more resistant to hacks by far. Think about it, where would you rather put your savings? Into something that was developed by the best of the best in academia over decades, or into something that was built quickly and with a small engineering team? Even in the early days of crypto that we're living in today, hacks and other custodial mistakes have led to over $40 billion in losses. Imagine what that will look like once the sector grows 100x. Since Bitcoin is digital, it does have a programmable interface, 
But today, in order to use it for DeFi, you have to wrap the Bitcoin, meaning that you entrust a third party with this custody. Governments and large corporations are keen to use Bitcoin in more ways, but can't risk it, since even the most reputable custodians are subject to human error and hacking. The way to get around this is through escrow contracts. In the finance world, secure transactions require escrow to eliminate counterparty risk. And that escrow needs to be trust minimized. So the escrow contracts themselves need to be decentralized as well. DLC, uh, discrete law contracts or DLCs are the missing piece. DLCs are two of three multi-sig wallets where one of the parties is an oracle that independently referees the outcome. Smart contracts lock and unlock Bitcoin by communicating with these oracles. As DLC link, we provide the Oracle infrastructure that runs this bridge. To make it decentralized, we're building a network where independent node operators run the oracles and get paid in our token. This bridge enables new types of non-custody DeFi applications that just weren't possible before. As one example, when we're now working with Arcadeco to build the world's first stablecoin that is backed by self-custody BTC. Our bridge lets Arcadeco lock Bitcoin in escrow to mint the stablecoin. The protocol tracks price fluctuations and can initiate liquidations when, when needed. The user locks Bitcoin to mint the stablecoin and burns the stablecoin to unlock the underlying Bitcoin. This capability is so transformative that their founding team called our pilot a bet the company moment for them. So just take a step back and think about how many types of smart contracts can be built. We're just getting started and we've cataloged over 25 major use cases already. And each of these use cases are multi-billion dollar markets in their own right, meaning that there'll be thousands of applications built on top of our bridge. We're starting at Stacks, but our broader vision is to use this bridge to connect ETH and eventually all blockchains to smart contracts on Bitcoin. Every chain will want to use native Bitcoin in their systems, which for us leads to tremendous network effects. Similar to how Chainlink captured market share for price feed oracles, will grow to be the dominant force for DLC oracles on Bitcoin. So why are we starting on Stacks? Stacks uses Bitcoin to settle transactions and Clarity was designed to be extremely secure. But today there's a huge limitation. Stacks can read Bitcoin state, but can't write to it. Our DLC bridge lets Stacks apps finally settle using Bitcoin, which is a major unlock for this ecosystem. As the next step in building our, our business, We've just launched our DLC bridge on ETH in partnership with Chainlink. Our best customers are companies that need to transact large amounts of Bitcoin safely. So we're in talks with some of the largest Bitcoin miners and investment funds. In traditional finance, Escor is a financial primitive that powers the global derivatives market worth one quadrillion dollars. So we're talking about an addressable market for escrowed apps in the trillions. It's gonna be hard to build all this out, but the good news is it's not my first rodeo. Eight years ago when AI was still new, I was the first to use AI to optimize the content marketing industry. The company I founded became the market leader and revolutionized its space. For this project, I teamed up with Dan Von Kohar, an entrepreneur who spent over a decade at hedge funds. Most recently, Dan founded an Oracle network called Rhombus and sold it to Chainlink. So he knows what it takes to build a robust and successful network. In terms of our round, join us as we build the bridge to a trillion dollars of capital on Bitcoin. I can confidently say that this is going to be a hundred times bigger than my last success. Thank you, Aki from DLC Link. Next up, we have Element 8. Take it away, Johnny. Good morning, everyone. I'm Jonathan Van, VP of Business Development and Innovation at Element 8, and we're building a user-owned internet service provider. Our team previously built the number one and number three private fixed wireless ISPs in the United States. And in that process, we connected millions of consumers to the internet, bought and integrated more than 100 companies, and worked with the government to deploy networks nationwide. Along the way, our team worked on decentralized systems, having worked with the core developers in the Ethereum, Dash, and Avalanche ecosystems. And we built Eliminate to rethink what a next generation ISP would look like. Today, we serve thousands of customers providing one gigabit per second high speed internet to the suburban and exurban communities. And unlike incumbents, we think about every end device in your home that's 30 plus. And that means installing and managing things like smart lights, locks, and thermostats, and also opening up our network to build next generation applications. 
With our approach, we're switching accounts away from AT&T and Spectrum every single day. And just to frame the opportunity, the heat map to my right represents over a billion dollars in annual recurring revenue. And while we have extensive experience serving the exurbs and rural communities, serving urban environments is a unique challenge. You have incumbents on their home turf who've invested millions of dollars to build local monopolies, and yet one in four people in the US don't have enough internet access to live a modern dig digital life. That means kids are two to three years behind, and that means millions of people don't have the same opportunities we do right this second. So why is that? It costs $12,000 per subscriber to provide fiber internet. And these basic economics are why traditional telcos rarely upgrade their networks and serve new customers, even with billions of dollars raining down from the government. But when we saw CityCoins launch last year, we saw a new way to deploy networks in urban environments to build a more connected future. And with our approach, we can ag aggressively connect and expand into cities like Miami, New York, and Austin to reach millions of new consumers to bridge the digital divide. So how do we do that? With our Web3 network infrastructure bridge, we can use existing hotspots around the city to give people secure, accessible, and fast internet. Simply by having CityCoin in your wallet, you can access hotspots all across the city, and it'll look like the portal you access at Starbucks, and your CityCoin holdings will easily authenticate into you and authenticate you into the network like a simple single sign-on. During phase one, our goal is to achieve mass distribution with free access to the network. And as that matures, we'll begin to layer on simple subscription models. We've already, got, we've already started working with the local government with the support of Mayor Suarez, as well as the Miami Foundation to distribute city coins to 100,000 people starting in Little Havana. To provide the most convenient and accessible connectivity, we start by enrolling community partners who already have Wi-Fi access points and our existing gathering spaces. That looks like churches, community centers, coffee shops, and enterprise homes. And as we build trust, we've already begun talking about how we provide private home connectivity and mobile hotspot connectivity. The E8 Miami Connected program will fill in areas where competitors have long ignored and begin expanding our footprint to disrupt the old telcos. Speaking of competitors, customers traditionally think about uh, high-speed internet on two vectors, price and speed. But with our Web3 network infrastructure bridge, we're going to introduce a new competitive vector in network functionality. Using Stacks, we can begin to give developers open, programmable, physical networks. And so what kind of use cases does that actually open up? So let's imagine you're a Miami coin holder and you're authenticated into the access point. Through your wallet and holdings, you can have personalized, unique network experiences. Let's say you get network priority based on loyalty. So that time you go to the coffee shop and you have a Zoom call, you get dedicated access to make sure that goes smoothly. Maybe you get a speed boost based on the amount you're holding. Maybe unlock smart, smart locks or parking areas with an NFT you hold. We believe that making physical networks open and programmable will unleash a new era of developer creativity. We've already received requests from the ecosystem and builders across the community, such as first responder systems, mobile hotspot providers, and learn to earn programs to build into our system. And we believe like Twilio unleash uh, innovations like Uber, we believe new network functionality and incentives enabled by mechanics like proof of transfer can lead us toward an inevitable user-owned internet. As we bridge physical networks and stacks, we'll be building toward a decentralized internet infrastructure. We're a proven team build and deploy our first networks wherever city coins are activated. And we're proudly backed by Harry Hurst, the co-CEO of pipe.com and Sky Dayton, the founder of Boingo and Earthlink. We're additionally grateful for the support by Stacks Ventures and we received one of the Stacks Foundation's largest partner grants to date. We're looking for partners who believe in the importance of user-owned digital infrastructure and what that means for the future. And if that's you, I'll see you in the breakout room. Thank you, Johnny from Element 8. Next up, we have ePioneers. Take it away, Alana. Hi, my name is Alana Milkes, and I'm the CEO and co-founder at ePioneers. We are enabling DeFi for climate infrastructure. Today, we are in a race. Uh, the planet has reached unsustainable carbon emissions, and nature can play a huge role in keeping our planet cool. Now, nature-based solutions could lead to the reduction of 30% of all carbon emissions by 2030. In Latin America, with over 50 million hectares of reforestable land, is ready to become the Saudi Arabia of the carbon economy. Now, private corporations worldwide 
have committed and are mandated to reach net zero goals. But the current carbon exchange system is inefficient, it's bureaucratic, and it's opaque. Now enter e-pioneers. We are unlocking the power of nature with Web3. And we're on our way to become the best suppliers of tokenized environmental credits. Now our suite of products digitize and fund nature through preservation and the investment from corporations and investors, reaching and offsetting their carbon. Our marketplace connects both the supply and the demand, unlocking the power of nature and making carbon trading easier, more efficient, and more reliable. Now we have a three steps process to enable and guarantee high quality carbon offsets. First, we run what we call a feasibility study, leveraging LiDAR satellite data and calculating the biomass potential that your land has. The more possibilities uh, your land has to absorb carbon, the more carbon credits you can generate. Now, once we understand how much carbon you can absorb from your land, we tokenize the credits that you can create and we bring them on chain, enabling that traceability and that transparency in the process of trading. And the third step is leasing the environmental credits that your land generated with our partnerships in our marketplace like city coins, also our corporate climate car and our own climate token called Selva. Now, so far, we already have a multi chain and cross platform software alive. We have accumulated over 11 million hectares ready to be brought on chain from the north of Colombia with world-class partners like the Humboldt Institute to also local partners here in Brazil, from the Amazon to the northeast of Brazil, to the south of Brazil, to the center of Brazil in the region where most of the farm uh, is happening. This is 11 million hectares. Just to give you some context, 20, 25,000 hectares in the Amazon can absorb about 10 million tons of carbon from the atmosphere. At market price, at $10 per carbon ton, this represents over $100 million in potential revenues from selling those carbon credits to the corporations pledging net zero. Now, this is only carbon and our first go-to market is focusing on carbon, but we're looking beyond carbon. We're looking at environmental credits as a whole. Why? Because both Brazil and Colombia are environmental credit powerhouses ready to be unleashed. Just to give you one example, Brazil and Colombia are the most biodiverse countries in the world. Brazil received the most amount of solar radiation throughout the year in the world. Brazil already supplies 10% of the world's food supply. This is huge, making it a huge candidate for regenerative agriculture credits. And on top of this, uh, we have a carbon market that is about to be unleashed in the next months and the next couple of years because Brazil already has, and Colombia, millions of hectares of reforestable land. Now, just last year, over $800 billion were invested in carbon from companies reaching those net zero pledges. Now, carbon is set to at least grow 50x this decade as we face one of the biggest challenges humanity has ever faced. Now, in our team, we have people across different industries. I'm a former professional soccer player for the Colombian national team. I am also an MIT innovator under 35. And I also have a background in ad tech, private equity, hedge funds, and software design. My co-founder and CTO has over four years of experience building across multiple blockchains. And our COO is Felipe Trindad with over five years of experience built in multiple uh, startups, and he's a world-class networker. Now, our lead scientist is Dr. Sebastian Howe, who's not only a prize winner as a Nobel Prize winner, but he has over 20 patents under his belt, has over 25 years of experience in climate, and he actually was the person who developed the internationally recognized green gas emissions framework for the IPCC and the United Nations just when carbon credits were getting started. Now we're looking for to lock in the current supply of suppliers of credits that we already have in our pipeline and to unleash the full power of nature. If you want to join us in this mission to become the next unicorn for climate from Latin America, you can join me at the breakout room. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ilana from ePioneers. Next up, 
We have flat lay. Take it away, Ali. Hey everyone, I'm Alex Moore, CEO of Flatland. And today, I'm here to talk to you about the biggest shift in commerce happening right in front of us. Now, the first time a shift this big happened was actually at the dawn of online commerce in Web1. This was the era of Google and Amazon where you search for items and buy them. Then everything changed during Web2 with the introduction of social commerce. Platforms like Instagram help people discover products based on their interests, and Shopify capitalized by helping anyone set up an online store. And now we're at the precipice of another massive shift. Web3 has fundamentally changed how we view our identities and relate to the groups we belong and aspire to. Board 8 Yacht Club has shown us how communities are platforms in their own right. And in the Web3 era, Flatlay will capitalize by being the platform empowering these communities to build their businesses together. And that time is now. The cult brands of tomorrow are actually being built by the strongest communities today. Supreme has commanded a premium based on tapping into people's desire to belong, while powerhouses like Board 8 tapped into that same desire, but embraced community from day zero to drive culture with their contributors. You see, in the Web3 era, the network effects are 10 times stronger. Owning an NFT in a collection is similar to being a franchise owner. That's why Board Ape has been able to build a billion dollar entity in less than a year. This is the essence of community-driven commerce. Contributing holders benefit from shared IP, full access to usage rights, and revenue sharing together. Along with providing credibility and social proof, popular communities benefit from compounding audience distribution. Members can now buy, support, and co-promote one another's businesses. So we started in social commerce, servicing over a thousand brands and projects with companies like Gillette, MSI, Canon, and many more. Then our customers started coming to us, hungry to evolve with the Web3 movement. While infamous brands immediately recognized this evolution and started to make strategic moves. Nike acquired Artifact, Adidas partnered with Board8, and Kith collaborated with Invisible Friends. And now we're seeing new businesses being formed across these communities. Individual members and celebrities are launching merch lines, food franchises, media empires, and much more through community-driven commerce. And they're not alone. Billions of creators, creatives, contributors, and brands are anxiously waiting on the sidelines, excited to do more together. 75% of PayPal's retailers just announced that they'll accept stablecoin and cryptocurrency payments by next year. However, they're all struggling to get started, and that's because the existing solutions do not provide the right infrastructure. Without wallet connections, blockchain integration, smart contract logic for inventory management, along with ways to co-promote one another, communities can't activate to their true potential. And even with social commerce fueling billions in sales on centralized networks like Instagram, TikTok, and Amazon, people still aren't getting paid. And legacy players have no incentive to change without cannibalizing their business models, keeping trillions from being unlocked and out of the hands of creators, customers, and companies. Enter Droplink, the needed commerce infrastructure for Web3 communities. We made it our mission to make Web3 commerce infrastructure simple and rewarding for all. Droplink powers decentralized registration of products linked to smart contracts. And built atop of stacks, our smart product listings automate marketing with inventory management and sales tracking at scale. Now sellers and sales are verified and settled on chain on the most secure network, BTC. By removing intermediaries while adding transparency, everyone benefits. And through our no-code tools, we're enabling Web3 communities to open up shop and grow businesses together. Every transaction across the network actually contributes back to support authenticated adopters. And as to our key features, contributors can settle payouts in fiat, crypto, stacks, and even choose to compound their earnings over time. We offer drop collaborations for promotions, token gating of products, NFT loyalty programs, smart product listings, and a community workflow portal. Use cases can vary from profit sharing on merch sales to rewarding contributors coming together to split royalties on campaign collaborations. So here's how we've generated so much traction in such a short amount of time. Every major marketplace and NFT project on Stacks has come to us to power their online commerce. And with the Stacks Foundation support, we're setting the standard in Web3 commerce tooling so that every retailer, marketplace, or DAP can take advantage of Droplink's utility. And by open sourcing it, we're enabling everyone to earn more together. 
Now, our business model is straightforward. We take a 5% transaction fee on all conversions through our no-code tools. And our freemium model scales up to 10K annually on plans taking advantage of all the advanced functionalities. And in the US market alone, it's massive and amounts to more than $250 billion annually between social commerce sales and affiliate network GMP. And as for the competition, most players are focused on incremental change like token gating. They're missing the big picture when it comes to fundamentally structuring the needed railways to activate community driven commerce. And we're empowering creators, brands, to both control their content audience and their data. And with over a thousand brands already on board, we're turning our first mover advantage into a sustainable moat. And as for our team, my co-founder and I had prior exits to Oracle and Microsoft. We then went on to scale flatly together and have proven the model with power retailers like Zalando doing 3 million in GMV sales through our platform solutions. We're now eight engineers and PhD strong between LA and Berlin focused on evolving the industry. We opened And if you believe that Web3 and community ownership will forever change how we do commerce, we would love to talk to you. Again, I'm Ollie Smore, CEO of Flatlay, and look forward to connecting afterwards. Thank you, Ollie from Flatlay. Next up, we have Forever. Take it away, Pio. Good morning, everyone. I'm Pio, CEO and co founder of Forever. Today, I'm going to show you how we are reshaping the move to earn segment with biodata games and our data marketplace. Problem is it's hard to take care of yourself. Pandemic has pushed us inside. There's been a massive increase in average of seven hours per day in screen time. It's costing Americans $1,100 a year in medical spend as a result of this inactivity. In general, there's lack of education around health. And the problem has been getting worse. It's led to all time high obesity, depression, anxiety. There's a health crisis in America, and we're here to do something about it. The move to earn segment has been recently taking off, and it's starting to address this. Problem is, the way it's done is not sustainable. Stepan has generated immense revenue and traction with their users, but their token has dropped 75%. The incentives are not aligned with revenue. Social incentives, on the other hand, are sustainable. A recent study in a journal of social sciences found out that 95% of those who started a weight loss program with friends completed it. 80% of people are going to be more motivated and require less financial incentives if they're able to engage in an activity with people like themselves. In addition, biodata can be monetized, but steps are just not enough. It doesn't give you enough data, so you can't really monetize it for any uh, uh, value. And so we at Forever, are building social games for healthy habits that allow our participants to earn through our data marketplace. We don't just track steps. We track biomarkers, exercise activity, and sleep. These data points are integrated into every game that we do. In fact, we started with a steps competition between New York City and Miami, and we got a ton of traction. 20,000 people signed up in less than a month and generated over half a billion steps on our platform we are on track to grow to 1 million active users. And our next game, version two of this, is called MeBots. MeBots is a really fun and engaging Tamagotchi-like game where you have this digital bio-avatar NFT, and the healthier you make this bio-avatar through your data, the healthier you become. In addition, we match you up with a fitness partner where you start a 30-day contract to get healthier. And the more you improve your health, the more rare the offspring NFTs you can breed and make more money that way. So you level up your MeBot and the data gets added into your biometric NFT. Then we anonymize the bio NFT and we sell them on our health data marketplace. Decentralized science platforms such as LabDAO, VitaDAO, CureDAO buy our anonymized bio NFTs with Forever token. And we pay our users with our token as well. So we make money from our games by selling MeBots, selling land they live in. It's kind of a, uh, like a Pokemon Go meets wellness to earn in the metaverse called Land42. People breed these MeBots there, buy accessory NFTs for them, et cetera. And we take 5% commission on the anonymized bio NFT purchased by decentralized science platforms. While move to earn market 
is a $10 billion market today, we believe wellness to earn is a much bigger market because we're tapping into the intersection of healthcare data analytics, fitness, and human health optimization. We have an amazing team. My name is Pio. I built and scaled a social network with 2 million monthly active users. I've been in Web3 since 2018. And for the past five years, I've been involved in human health optimization and human longevity research space. My co-founder, Ken, recently sold his company, Nomi, to DoorDash. We're joined by an amazing head of product, Brian, that I've worked with for many years. Our CTO, CTO I worked uh, as well for many years. Game designers, marketing executives. We have great advisors. And we're about to form a scientific advisory board as well. We're just raising our first pre-seed round. We believe the future of health and wellness is going to be powered by Web3. If you're with us, get in touch. My name is Pio. This is Forever. Thank you, Pio from Forever. Next up, we have friends. Hi, I'm Drew Falkman. I'm the CEO of Friends. For 15 years, companies have changed how they relate to their customers. And when you think back to Web 1, for the first time, companies had a virtual destination where customers could go and they could interact with your company without talking to anybody. And then along came social media and mobile phones. And now companies knew so much more about their customers and they could create a one-on-one -on -one interactive relationship. Now enter Web 3 and we're able to create these really engaged communities with ownership. Now at each step of the way, there have been major companies that have arisen to accommodate these requirements. Look at GeoCities from Web1, sold to, sold to Yahoo in 2005. HubSpot, IPO, there were $31 billion last year. For Web3, that's gonna be friends. So what is this community all about? Well, I've worked and helped to grow four of the larger communities in Stacks, and I've interviewed tons of community managers and project owners. And what I found is that successful communities all have the same basic thing that they proactively do. They know their members. They give them things that they can do to help the community and the tools to do so. Now, usually they have to build those tools right now, but that will change. And then they reward them when they do. Friends is going to make all Web3 projects able to do this by creating a platform that includes analytics, wallet integrations, growth tools, and easy rewards. The way we do this is we integrate with tools that they already use, like chat, Discord. We integrate with Twitter and social. We integrate with wallets so that we can easily identify and reward people. We create a reputation engine and analytics so we know who our members are and we know how our group is growing. And then we enable easy collaboration between these communities and the ability to reward members that contribute. So where we started was integrating the wallet. One of the things we found in our research through the Stacks Foundation residence program that I had was that a lot of time is being wasted by these community managers doing simple menial tasks like gathering wallets for whitelisting. So we made that, that collection. Now, once we know what the wallets are, we can look and see what their NFT holdings are and we can give them roles and access. But the next step is really to start building growth tools. And the first tool we built is called Friends of Friends. And basically how this works is when you invite someone into the community, you get points. And when that person invites other people into the community, you get some points for that too, down a couple layers. Now we launched this soft launch, did a little test with some of the communities. The largest community that was already established and none of these communities ran contests or did anything spammy. They simply just implemented the tool. The largest community gained 7%. The smallest community more than doubled in size. The average was 74%. These tools are needed and they work. Now, once you start gathering this information, like what tokens people hold, how many invites they've had, how much they interact, well, this becomes a portable reputation. And now people can move from community to community and they have proof of community contribution. And so as they move to new communities, they wanna be recognized for that. And as new communities install it, more users get created. So it creates a wonderful flywheel that can grow our company quickly. We have good traction in the Stacks ecosystem. About half of the top NFT projects use our tool. 
And we have good partnerships with marketplaces and tooling providers, but we're going multi-chain. We're working on that right now. Now, since we don't have any smart contracts as of now, we're mainly just a wallet connection. We can either create the wallet connection if needed for these new chains, or we can integrate tools that are already in use. So it's not a huge deal to go to other chains. Right now, the market is large. Last year, $200 billion in revenue was generated by Web3 projects. Now, if you look at that from a traditional business standpoint, they usually spend about 11.7% on marketing, right? So we're looking at about a $24 billion market already. But here's the thing. Brands are coming. They see the advantage of having these engaged communities. Even last month, Starbucks announced that they're going to create a Web3 community in the bear market. So this is happening. So the way our business model works is we have a community license. Anyone can use that. It has the wallet connector and enables the communities to collaborate with one another. Now, if you want growth tools and analytics, we're going to release NFT licensing this year. And then next year, we're going to roll out SaaS licensing so that brands can come on board and we can have more granular integrations and things like that. Now, of course, there's competition in the space. There's a lot of needs to be met. But most of the competitions that we've seen focus narrowly on one problem or another, on the reputation aspect or on NFT projects specifically or Discord. No one that I've seen is taking a holistic approach like us. So my experience, I've been in product and tech for about 20 years, uh, Web3 for about five, mostly working on community tools. My partner, Yvonne, I worked at, at a consulting company, Modus Create. He has a master's in computer science and he has a great balance of speed and building things that are network ready. So we're looking to raise. And if you see the problem of these communities, please come join us in the breakout room. Love to chat to you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Drew from Friends. Next up, we have Gamma. Take it away, Jamil. Thank you, Trevor. I'm Jamil, CEO of Gamma. And today I'm going to show you how Gamma's position as the most secure NFT marketplace will lead us to become the most successful NFT marketplace as well. As you know, NFTs are the fastest growing use case in crypto, with 200 fold growth last year to $20 billion in trading volume. But we're still very early. While Coinbase has around 100 million users, OpenSea is just 2% of that. So how will NFTs reach mainstream adoption? And how will those next 100 million users be onboarded into NFTs? I'm here to tell you that it won't be on Ethereum. And here's why. Ethereum is fundamentally broken for both users and creators. For users, you're susceptible to dangerous and impossible to stop hacks and exploits. And for creators, you have a massive barrier to entry, preventing you from getting started and becoming successful. For the creator problem, in the first, for the user problem, in the first four months of this year, $50 million in NFT assets were stolen from hacks because of fundamental flaws in Ethereum's design. At the technical level, with Ethereum, it's not possible to determine what a transaction on the blockchain will do, and contracts are in incomprehensible and unreadable bytecode. You're simply flying blind. So what does this mean? It means that connecting your wallet to any website can result in all your funds being drained. And downloading a file from someone can lead to theft of your digital assets. And this isn't just a theoretical concern. This is an example of the fake version of X2Y2. This is an actual number one hit on Google for X2Y2 for over a day. Thousands of users visited the website, saw their wallet popped up, clicked a button, and lost their life savings. How is that acceptable today? If that wasn't bad enough, Imagine receiving an email from one of your VC partners to download a new report about stablecoin risk. This is an actual fake email received by a well-known crypto investor. How would you even know that it was malicious? That investor downloaded the report and lost $1.7 million in NFTs because of this hack. There was simply no way to tell from start to finish what had gone wrong. On Stacks, however, 100% of transaction results can always be determined in advance, and contracts are readable and open source by design. It's like taking that blindfold off. So let's see what this difference means in practice. We can always warn users 100% of the time when connecting your wallet to a website will result in losing your assets. And spotting a fake transaction inserted by malware is easy. And we can see exactly how that happens. You can see the function name and which website requested it, 
you can know exactly what's going out of your wallet and, you, and exactly what you're getting back in return. There's no way to hide what a transaction will do. And if a website tries to act maliciously, you get this warning. This transaction is not secure. Imagine if that VC had it. Imagine if those users who are visiting that malicious version of X2Y2 had this. And with Gamma, we make it even more secure by showing you on our website exactly what your wallet should say. Something like what happened to X2Y2 or that hack with the VC or these OpenSea hacks could not happen with Gamma. And these NFTs are secured by Bitcoin, the most secure and trusted blockchain out there. The security works at multiple levels. And this is why we've had such incredible traction. We're the market leader on Stacks and our users are at peace when they trade NFTs on our platform. They know we're built on a solid foundation. We have a beautiful product with everything you'd expect from a full service marketplace. Users love coming to our website, browsing NFTs and exploring utilities, viewing profiles and seeing what's listed for sale and what they can trade and different categories of art. And when it comes to creators, we've solved their problem too. Building on Ethereum is just too hard. If you wanna launch an NFT collection over there, you have to hire a developer, which can cost tens of thousands of dollars. And that's not even including the gas fees, which can range from the thousands to tens of thousands of dollars, depending on the complexity of your contract. And if you decide to circumvent this by using the OpenSea shared storefront, you get no control over your contract. It's impossible to get verified and you're lost in a sea of noise. At Gamma, we've solved this problem with our innovative creator launchpad. We give you your own contract that you own, that you can deploy for $1 in less than five minutes. And we vet, verify, and promote artists so you can get your work out there without worrying about it. You can see just how easy our creator launchpad is to use. You go to our website, upload your images, set your price, and you're live. That's why we have over 400 collections launched with our platform. That's 10% of all smart contracts on Stacks. We take a 10% fee from primary sales and a 2% cut of secondary trades, meaning that we're already making revenue. And we're not done expanding. We see Bitcoin as a massive market opportunity, and we're the only marketplace that integrates with native Bitcoin wallets. On Gamma, you can mint NFTs with Lightning, and you can trade NFTs with your friends who only have a Bitcoin wallet. This is a fundamental paradigm change. This makes us poised to expand into a massive market of over 200 million Bitcoin wallet holders. To put that in perspective, that's 100 times the number of users on OpenSea and double the number of users on Coinbase. We're the only fully mar open mar marketplace for Bitcoin NFTs. So when it comes to our competition, all of them have far less security than Stacks and Bitcoin. And most of them actually still have a high barrier to entry for users. We offer the most secure marketplace for users with the lowest barrier to entry for creators. And as we've seen with OpenSea's failed expansion into Solana, our current lead and network effects on Stacks are both sustainable and defensible. I'm proud to be joined by an incredible team. I previously worked at Apple and started my master's at Stanford in computer science. My co-founder is an incredible marketer who has managed multi-million dollar media budgets. Our team is already 10 strong and is an absolutely incredible team. Today we're raising. If you believe the next 100 million NFT users will want to be on the most secure NFT marketplace, we'd love to talk to you. My name is Jamil and we are Gamma. Thank you, Jamil from Gamma. Next up, we have Genobank. Take it away, Daniel. Thank you. Thank you, Trevor. Good morning, everybody. My name is Daniel Uribe. I am the CEO and co-founder of Genobank. And today I will present to you the world's first DNA data marketplace powered by bio NFTs, Genomarket. In 2017, my son was diagnosed with a rare disease thanks to a DNA test. The condition is called Glanzmann thrombostinia. And while this disease is known and diagnosed, there is no cure today. The key to a potential treatment or cure is right in front of us, locked in the data of our DNA. But the data is either siloed or non-existent. If we can unlock enough data, hundreds of millions of people affected by genetic diseases can be cured, including my son. 
most researchers, most researchers declare that lack of availability of biosamples and derived data is their biggest limiting factor. But there is so, such a good news. Patients want to contribute. Almost all of them agree to when given a detailed consent mechanism, because this is the real blocker, their consent. There has never been technology to solve this problem effectively and ethically. Web3 is our chance to fix this. Welcome to the world of decentralized biosamples. Since my son was diagnosed, I made this my mission. In 2020, Genobank partnered with the inventor of the ERC721, William and Triking, to create a new standard for consent NFTs. We call them bio NFTs. They are non-transferable, revocable consent, non-fungible tokens for human biosamples. BioNFTs are backed by our peer-reviewed scientific research, published already by leading scientific journals, and we have three patents pending around them. In the current legacy system, your name, email, and phone, and other personal data are exposed, and there is no way to trace the, the right biodata. In the new world of BioNFTs, each biosample collection kit or tube is linked to a secure and anonymous DNA data wallet. And after the DNA data is extracted by a certified laboratory, users may choose to issue revocable consent tokens toward a specific third party, such as a researcher, and unlock potential monetization. With Web3 and BioNFTs, we're also able to introduce the final piece of the puzzle. Introducing to you, Genome Market the first of its kind DNA data marketplace where researchers, laboratories, and patients can come together to unlock their data and find the cures we need to help millions of people around the world. Through Genome Market, researchers can post requests for data with potential bounties, tapping our entire network of patients and laboratories. Patients can review research requests and issue a new, new consents and potentially earn for, for sharing their data anonymously. Through our marketplace, we can unlock hundreds of times more data than currently exists. Today, data liquidity is controlled by a handful of companies. By unlocking the data supply for research directly from laboratories and permissioned by their owners, the patients, we estimate the market could potentially grow more than five times. Our business model is straightforward. We take 5% transaction fee on all data exchange in our marketplace, as well as a 1% royalty and sub-licensing fee. Currently, we're working with 28 laboratories. We've generated $265,000 in revenue to date, and we have recorded more than 300,000 samples on the blockchain. We are now ready to launch our marketplace and change the game forever. Competitor platforms are focused only on general purpose data and don't have the specific solutions needed to serve laboratories, who are the crucial piece of the puzzle and the reason we've been able to grow our reach and revenue during the pandemic. I'm very proud to work every day with my amazing team. I have more than 17 years experience in cybersecurity studied data law at the London School of Economics and completed my executive education at Stanford. Our COO, Sharon Holm, is also an experienced business leader, and we have a strong blockchain team. Our advisors are experts in genomics and FDA approvals for new drug discoveries. Since scientists completed the first human genome in 2000, we have known the key to making humanity healthier lies within the code of our DNA, the most valuable data in the world. But only we only now do we have the technology to unlock the, this data and enable equitable precision medicine era. We are raising to build genome market and significantly increase the available data to accelerate novel genome guided treatments for billions of affected family like mine in the near future. I hope you will join me and Genobank in our mission. Thank you very much. Thank you, Daniel. So that was it, guys. That was the presentations from day one.
and we're going to move into the breakout rooms. I just want to say what a pleasure it's been working with these founders, truly great human beings, and just the drive, the ambition, and the execution. It's, it's been my honor, guys. So great job today. If you're watching and you want to meet any of our founders, I recommend getting on our uh, meeting scheduling portal right now. We're going to open up the breakout room so you can get a head start here. Great job to our founders and a pleasure to everyone who's joined us today.